Let's get to the highly anticipated testimony, the latest today in the murder trial of Karen Reed. She alleges that she is being framed for the death of her Boston police officer boyfriend. We're talking about John O'Keefe. And today we heard from the owners of the property where he died. Nicole and Brian Albert both took the stand today. Their testimony capped off another dramatic week for the high profile trial that has sparked headlines across the country. So let's get you caught up today. We have live team coverage for you outside of court in Dedham. Kirsten Glavin there on the left is going to take a look back at what we learned this week. But but let's begin with John Maroney there on the right and the latest on today's testimony. John? Cole, Nicole and Brian Albert say they invited a group of family and friends back to their home. That included John O'Keefe. But contrary to defense claims, they say he never came inside. Just hanging out, sitting around the house talking, having a good time, nothing crazy. Nicole Albert recalling the mood inside her home six hours before her sister stormed into her bedroom where she and her husband Brian were sleeping to tell them the body of John O'Keefe was found in their front yard. She's saying he, he's out in the snow. We found him out in the snow. We don't know if he's okay. Karen Reed has pleaded not guilty to hitting and killing her Boston police officer boyfriend with her SUV and leaving him to die in the snowy front yard. Brian Alberts, a retired Boston police officer. He never worked with John O'Keefe, but considered him a friend. You know, I considered him to be um, somebody that I could hang out with and, and have a good time with. The defense says Reed has been framed, arguing O'Keefe was attacked inside the house and then left outside. John O'Keefe and Karen Reed never entered my house. The group had been at the Waterfall Bar and Grill before returning to the house on Fairview Road. The defense has suggested Brian Albert, his nephew Colin Albert, and friend Brian Higgins are responsible for attacking O'Keefe along with the family's German shepherd, Chloe. And because of the chilling effect... Judge Beverly Canoni has decided to restrict the access of Turtle Boy, the controversial blogger. He will not be able to report from inside the courtroom when witnesses he's accused of intimidating are on the stand. They've used these trumped-up charges to smear my name and, and, and paint me as some sort of dangerous intimidator. Now, Aiden Carney says he does plan to appeal this decision. Testimony is over for the day, but Brian Albert, he will be back on Monday and on the stand for cross-examination. Well, I'm in Dedham, John Marone, NBC10 boss. John, thank you. Our team coverage from Dedham continues now. NBC10's Kirsten Glavin joining us live with a closer look at what we learned overall this week. Kirsten. Well, Karen Reed's defense team has continued to hammer away at the credibility of this law enforcement investigation, honing in on just how small the town of Canton really is. Evidence collection and Canton connections, a primary focus during week two of testimony in the Karen Reed murder trial. On Monday, police explaining how a leaf blower was used to uncover a broken cocktail glass near where John O'Keefe's body was found. Red Solo Cubs borrowed from a neighbor to hold the evidence, which was then stored in a stop and shop grocery bag. It appeared that those unsealed cups with blood, liquid blood in them are situated right near the right rear quarter panel of the SUV. To the rear of the vehicle, yes. On Tuesday, further scrutiny upon learning witnesses were never separated in the house on Fairview Road. Were Brian and Nicole Albert there? Yes. Were they within earshot? Yes. And they listened to that conversation as well? Yes. On Wednesday, these surveillance videos capturing a night of bar hopping from C.F. McCarthy's to the Waterfall Bar and Grill. Friends there describing Reed and O'Keefe's loving demeanor before the night took a deadly turn. They were affectionate toward each other, loving toward each other. And on Thursday, Chris Albert, a Canton selectman, questioned about his family ties. His wife, Julie Albert, grilled about her friendship with the lead investigator's sister, Courtney Proctor, calling her 67 times in the eight months after O'Keefe's death. Were you using Courtney Proctor as an intermediary to communicate with Michael Proctor about this case? Objection. I'll allow it. No, I was not. Again, this wraps up week two. Now, we have 160 witnesses to get to between both the defense and the prosecution, so still quite a ways to go. We're live here in Dedham tonight. I'm Kirsten Glavin, NBC10 Boston.